calling. I'm pressing on to reach my goal. We have been called to reach this generation with the love and gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, Bishop Peter is obeying this higher call by preaching and teaching the word of God, both in Kenya and in many other nations of the world, supporting the weak and encouraging the brokenhearted. He and his wife Faith founded Overcoming Faith Church, which is involved in evangelism, church planting, leadership training, family enrichment programs, and equipping the saints to serve. In their passion and love for the weak and neglected, they have established Happy Life Children's Home for Abandoned Babies, Happy Life Christian School, and recently Jesse K. Children's Hospital. Thanks to the many friends and partners who have come along to make this happen. Glory and praise to our God. Keep the faith. I want to take a few minutes uh, before we, I release you. Um, when, when, when the Bible talks about keeping faith and walking by faith and living by faith, it's very important. Five things about faith. One is that faith comes by hearing. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing. Can you say with me, faith comes by hearing. So you need to understand, the more you hear the word, because it comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it's important that you, you actually continue to hear the word and hear the word and hear the word. So faith comes by hearing. Number two, number two faith is strengthened through prayer. Faith is strengthened through prayer. So if you are not praying, your, your faith will become weak. Because it is when we pray and we see God you know, working in our lives and doing things, then our faith is strengthened. Can somebody say, I'll pray more. So the more you pray, the more you are strong in your faith. Number three, number three, faith is established through exercise through exercise the more you you know establish or grow the more you 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 exercise your faith you step out by faith you do things by faith the more your faith grows hallelujah so i i want you to to begin to exercise your faith and now what is faith hebrews 11 1 now faith is the assurance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. So faith is going for the things that are not seen. Don't wait for things that you, that you see so that you can you know, believe. No. Jesus said to Thomas, Blessed are them that believe before they can actually see. So exercise your faith. Believe God. And you'll begin to see God working through your life. Hallelujah. Will you exercise your faith? And number four, faith is passed through impartation. We pass the faith, the baton of faith through impartation. When you look at people walking by faith, when you listen to people who teach faith and they pray for you, then you receive the gift of faith. So you can, you can be imparted through, uh, you know, to receive faith. So faith is uh, uh, passed from one person to another, from one generation to another, through impartation. Paul says, I'm reminded, you know, talking to Timothy, I'm reminded to the, uh, about the faith that was first in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, and now it is in you. So those are three generations of faith. So there was some impartation happening through generations. Hallelujah. I pray that people will begin to see your faith and they'll begin to grow in their faith because they can see you exercising faith. Hallelujah. Can somebody say he's talking about me? Now, Luke 18 and verse 8. Luke 18. Jesus is asking, now when, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith? Will he find faith? Jesus is coming back. And the thing he'll be looking for, you know, will he really find faith on the earth? Will you still be holding on to faith? Will you still be believing? Can somebody say yes? You know, God is saying when he comes back, what he'll be looking for, people who are still walking by faith. People who are still living by faith. People who are still believing God. 
Hallelujah. If you read Hebrews 11, the Bible says uh, they died waiting. Hallelujah. The apostles, the great men and women of faith, what happened? They died waiting. They refused to quit. They refused to give up. Faith does not quit. Faith does not give up. Faith does not look down. Faith does not retreat. So you decide, I'm not giving up. I will wait on God. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody shout, I'm not giving up? I'll believe to the end. Jude one twenty. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. So build your faith in your most holy faith. Faith is the most holy thing that we have. Hallelujah. So faith is, 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 is precious. We should build and grow in our faith. Can somebody say hallelujah? So that at the end we can say with Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy 4, 7. I know we love to quote this. We see it in the you know, believement and all kinds of uh, advertisement. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the list. I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. Will you keep the faith? If you keep the faith, say, I will. And I said last Sunday, one of the things that faith will do, and, and if you walk by faith, you keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on him. Stop looking down. Stop looking at your circumstances, your situation, your discouragement, your pain, sickness, uh, setbacks, whatever it is. Stop looking at them. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Number two, do not look back. Faith does not look back. Luke 9, 62. If you put your hands on the plow, Jesus said, and you look back, you are not worthy of the kingdom. So faith does not look back. Somebody say, I'm not looking back. So I challenge you today, as you walk by faith, stop looking back. Apostle Paul says, we are not of those who look back and are destroyed, but we are of those who, who press on. Those who fight to the end. Those who continue and continue no matter what. Somebody say again, I'm not looking back. I'm not turning back. So faith does not look back. When you, when you choose to believe, continue believing to the end. Hallelujah. I pray that you will not look back. I pray that nothing will discourage you and you begin to look back. I'm reminded of, uh, of, uh, of Sodom. And you know the wife of Lot, what happened to her when she looked back? What happened? She became a pillar of salt. She died. She was destroyed because she looked back. God is calling for somebody who will decide, I am not looking back. Paul says, one thing I do, I forget the things behind me and I press on to what is awaiting me. Something good is in front of you. I'm saying something good is coming. If you keep looking ahead, if you keep pressing on, if you keep believing and waiting on God, something good is about to happen. But it will not happen for everybody. It will happen for the people who have refused to give up. If you are refusing to give up, put your hands together and praise the Lord and celebrate Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know there are those places I used to be, but I'm not looking back. I know who I used to be before I knew the Lord, the BC, before Christ. But I'm not looking back. I know the years I wasted, but I'm not looking back. Our God is a God of a new beginning. He says in Isaiah 43, behold, I'm doing a new thing. See it, perceive it. I'm doing a new thing. If you keep looking back, you miss what God, you know, on what God is doing ahead of you. Something good is about to happen, but it's ahead of you. Somebody say, I'm not looking back. Philippians 3, 13. Forgetting those things that are behind you. Forget those things that are behind you. Do you know one thing? You cannot change yesterday. You cannot change last week, last month, last year, 10 years ago. You can do nothing about them. Hallelujah. Do not dwell on your past. And you know what? This is what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. There are people here, that you have been stopped from getting to your destiny because you have been dwelling on your past. Whatever happened, happened. 
Whatever you lost, you lost. All of us have. Hallelujah. But you know what? Apostle Paul says, brethren, I do not count myself to have, to, to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Reach out to what is ahead of you. Stop reaching out to what is behind you. And bringing all your troubles of last year to now and yesterday and last week. No. Today I declare to you God will give you a new beginning. I'm saying God will give you a new beginning. God will give your family a new beginning. God will give your business a new beginning. God will give your health a new beginning. God will give your destiny a new beginning. Somebody say a new beginning. God will give you a new beginning. If only you can believe. Can somebody say I believe. I pray that you, as you leave this place today. May you walk into a new beginning. May you walk into a new season. May you walk into a new territory of blessing and breakthrough. May you walk into a place you have never been to before. And stop looking back and look ahead. Something good is about to happen. God told Abraham, open your eyes. The land you will see, I will give it to you. He did not tell him, turn back. No, he said, look ahead. The land you see. I don't know what you are seeing today, but when I look in front of me, I can see a great destiny. I can see a great future. I can see a new beginning. I can see God restoring what the devil has stolen. I can see my years ahead are better than the years behind me. Can somebody say, my destiny is about to come. He said, the land I will see, you will see, I will give it to you. Now, God has no problem giving it to you. But the problem is that you cannot see it. May God open your eyes. Everybody put your hands on your eyes and say, God, open my eyes to see what you are seeing. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. You have been seeing defeat. You have been seeing enemies, discouragement, pain setbacks but today God is opening your eyes to see something better God is opening your eyes to see your victory God is opening your eyes to see your breakthrough in the name of Jesus and finally as I close number three keep moving when you have faith you don't stop you keep moving Mark 16 verse 1 you keep moving you keep going Making progress. Hallelujah. Don't stop. Keep going. Keep moving. Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome, bought spices that they might come and anoint him. Verse 2. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they said among themselves, Who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? Verse 4. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. Now, this is my point. Mary, Magdalene, and the, these women, uh, are, they bought spices by faith to go and anoint the body of Jesus after he died. But they remembered there is a big stone in front of the tomb. And they began to wonder, who will remove the stone for us? <laughs> now, the good thing is, and where faith comes in, they did not sit in the house and they are asking themselves, who will remove the stone for us? Oh, your jiwa ilikuwa kubwa. It was so huge. Nani anaweza kuyondoa? Oh, we are women. Oh, we need a caterpillar. Oh, we need a big machine. Oh, we need this. And they are mourning in the house. No! They decided, we do not know who will, but we are going. Hallelujah! We don't know how the stone will be removed, 
but we are going there. Can somebody say, I'm moving? I'm going. I'm making some progress. I am calling upon somebody here. Step out. Stop asking in your, re in your room, in your bedroom, in your house, and you're there depressed, wondering who will remove the stone. The miracle is in the going. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Do you know the problem with most people? They keep mourning and sitting somewhere and thinking, that stone, he or Mawe, that stone, who can remove it? Mary, did you see how big it was? Oh, yeah, it was so huge. I don't think we can do it. I don't think we can make it. But what happened? Look at verse 4. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. Now, if they did not move, they would have stayed in the house. Oh, I'm talking to somebody here. Your miracle has already happened, but you are still seated somewhere asking how can it be done. I came to say, begin to move this week and you will see your miracle. I say hallelujah. Begin to move this week and the door has already been opened. I came here to build your faith and to say, walk by faith and not by sight. Let me close with Joshua 3 verse 14. Joshua 3 14. So it was when the people set out from their camp to cross over the Jordan with the priest bearing the ark of the covenant before the people. And those who bore the ark of the, uh, of the covenant came to the Jordan and the feet of the priest who bore the ark deep in the edge of the water for Jordan overflows all its banks during the whole time of harvest. 16. That the waters which came down uh, from upstream stood still and rose in a heap very far away at Dam. The city that is beside uh, Zaratam saw the waters that went down into the sea of the Araba. The salt sea failed and we are cut off and the people crossed over opposite. Now, now, now. This is what was happening as we pray. God told Joshua, let me give you a strategy how you cross Jordan. Don't try to build a, build a bridge. You will stay here forever. You don't have a helicopter to fly you over. You don't have a boat for all of you, a million people plus to go to the other side. You don't have such a boat. Let me give you a strategy. Let me give you a strategy. Let me give you a strategy. Somebody say strategy. God gives strategies. Let me give you a strategy. This is how you do it. Tell the priests who are carrying my anointing, the chosen ones, to carry the Ark of the Covenant. And when they carry the Ark of the Covenant, tell them to step on the waters of Jordan with their feet. Now, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. But how many know that faith does not make sense? When you obey, it doesn't make sense. Don't try to reason. The Bible says, you shall lay your hands on the sick, they will recover. Okay. Mutu huya kona malaria. Malaria, mutu anakunyonga malaria queen. Siku tatu, diyo apone. Nitamwekelea mikono apone. Hata kabla uombe, tayari doubt zimeja. But that we are trying to use your common sense. Don't try to imagine how God will do it. They were told, carry the ark, which is the presence of God. Oh, the presence of God is right here. Somebody will receive their breakthrough right here. And when you step into the Jordan, the Bible says, the waters gave way. Maji and there was a big heap of water. And it was a rainy season. There was the Jordan was overflowing. But even, even if it is overflowing, it doesn't matter how things, how situations, how condition is right now, it could be overflowing, and it could be a bad season for you. But I came to declare the presence of the Lord is here. The ark of the Lord is here. The glory of the Lord is here. Something good is about to happen. 
Hallelujah. God did not care that Jordan was overflowing. Or he said, obey and you will see the glory of God. Step into the water and the presence of God will divide River Jordan. And the Bible says they obeyed. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I will obey. They obeyed and once they obeyed, the water stopped. Oh, glory to God. I want somebody who has faith right now. And you are believing God for anything. You are believing God. It could be, have been a bad season. I want somebody who has had a bad season. And you have faith right now. That uh, as we pray. Because we are carrying the ark of the covenant. Which the Holy Spirit is here. The power, the anointing of God is here. The blood of Jesus is here. And you are trusting God for a breakthrough. I want you to come and stand here with me. Let's believe God for a miracle. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. It may be looking so bad, so ugly. It may be looking an I I impossible. But there is, there is power when you begin to move. And even as you come here, something is happening already. As you are walking here, something is happening already. As you are walking here, a miracle is happening. As you are walking here, your breakthrough is happening. God is not a respecter of persons. Oh, Rabo Shatadaba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God will make a way. God will make a way. God will make a way. Yes, you have faith. God will make a way. God will make a way. God will make a way. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Yes, you have faith. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. It does not matter how, how bad, how angry, how difficult, how challenging the situation looks like. Oh, Yandara Vosaya. It does not matter how it looks like. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command that miracle. I command that breakthrough. I command that favor. I command that door to open. I command right now. Receive your miracle. This is the timing of the Lord. This is the time of the Lord. This is the season of the Lord. My God, my God, my God. Have your way, have your way, have your way. Have your way, have your way. Have your way. Father, we worship you. We give you praise. We give you glory, Jesus. There is nothing, God, you cannot do. You who made a way through the Jordan, make a way for somebody right here. Move, Holy Spirit, in the life of somebody right here. Somebody who has waited on you. Somebody who has had a difficult season. I speak right now. A new beginning. And Jesus said unto her. According to your faith. According to your faith. I pray right now. According to your faith. That which you have believed God for. Right now. Right now. It's happening. Right now it's happening. Rambabo Shataraba. Right now, God is healing that relationship. Right now is happening. Rabo Sikayandaraba. That relationship is being restored in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you. There are families here that God is healing. And I pray as you go back home this afternoon, God is healing that family. God is restoring his glory in that family in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands and receive that breakthrough in the family. That breakthrough in the family in the name of Jesus. Rema Satarababoshara. Oh God, oh God, oh God, have your way. Stretch your hand, oh God, and touch your people. Set them free, oh God. God of Israel. 
You who made a way through Jordan, make a way. You who removed a big stone in front of the tomb. Holy Spirit, remove that stone. Remove every doubt. And right now I pray that the power of God. Listen, there are people here. The devil has bombarded you with a lot of condemnation because of things that happened to you or even things you did. Your past is gone. And Romans 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. And I want to say to you right now, every condemnation of the devil is leaving you now. Now, now, get it right. The person who is saying there is no condemnation did not start as a saint. Paul was not a believer. But when God set him free, he says, I'm not condemned anymore. And this has been heavy on you. You have been condemned because of the way things went and happened in your past. But you know what? Our God is a God of another chance. And our God does not condemn you. The devil condemns you. The Bible says he's the accuser of brethren. So the devil has been accusing you and condemning you. And you want to rise but he's still condemning you. Putting you down. Oh look at you. Look at what you did. Look at, look at, look at your life. Look at your past. But right now as I pray with you. Every condemnation. Bitterness. No matter what you have been through. It's now leaving you. In the name of Jesus. Can you lift up your hands if you are one of those people and declare, I am free. If you are one of those people that the devil has been condemning, lift up your hands and begin to say, I am free, I am free, I am free. I am free, I am free, I am free. I am not condemned. The Lord loves me. Let me tell you, there is nothing you can do for God to love you more. He loves you the way you are. He, he has changed you. He has forgiven you. Some of you, you already repented, but the devil keeps telling you, maybe you are not forgiven. The devil is a liar. You have been forgiven. You have been set free. Come on, lift up your hands and say, I am free. 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 And the Bible says in 1 Samuel 1, when Hannah left the presence of God in the house of the, the temple where Eli was ministering. She went home and her countenance changed. Her appearance, her face, her life changed. She began to celebrate to thank God. I want you now, as you leave this place, I may not lay my hands on you, all of you, but by faith I lay my hands on you, on your face, that a God will change your countenance. Receive it in the name of Jesus. As you leave this place, let God change your countenance and give you the countenance of joy. Can you lift up your hand and declare, I receive joy. I receive peace. I receive joy. I receive peace in the Holy Ghost in Jesus name and my life say like you believe it and my life will never be the same again in Jesus name I am healed come on declare I am healed I am free I am blessed I am the head and not the tail and from today I am a new creation. God is on my side. No one can be against me. In Jesus' name, celebrate your victory. Hallelujah. I say celebrate your victory. Celebrate your victory. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. And you know what? According to your faith.
that which you came for here, it is done. It is done. It will not be done. It is done. The Bible says when you pray, believe. Do you believe? Do you believe? Let's pray for the people watching us on TV, listening on radio, internet. If you don't know the Lord as your Savior and you are listening to us, repeat this prayer and let's pray with them. Lord Jesus, I come to you. I'm a sinner. Forgive me of all my sin. Write my name in the book of life. Today I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. You know what? All of you who have prayed that prayer, you are saved. Your name is written in the book of life. Amen. Amen. Call us, send us a message. Let us know what the Lord has done for you. Every week, souls are coming to the kingdom. Amen. It is a time and a season of harvest. Amen. Amen. And if you are near Thika Road, come worship with us on Sunday. First service at 8 o'clock, second service at 10 and the Lord will bless you. Amen. We are right opposite Garden City Mall. You will see Blessed House. Come and worship with us. And God will bless you. And we are praying for you. We are praying for your family. Every miracle happening here. Receive it wherever you are. That miracle also belongs to you. In Jesus mighty name receive it. Amen. Let's celebrate the Lord for what he's doing. For his people out there. Amen.